All right, hey, Jairus, I hope you're well. Um, God, we missed, uh, missed each other. Um, was it, yeah, this week, Jesus, we're getting confused with days, it's been crazy. Um, anyways, I just wanted to do a little, I guess, rundown of some things we talked about, just as reminders for you for the future. Um, and then I want to start it off with kind of what I said that, you know, thank you so much for your time and um, giving me uh, the chance to work with you. Um, through this time to teach you some stuff. And, you know, I think we both knew at certain times that we may not get to where we wanted. Um, you know, I think, you know, I learned a little bit about you. You got really busy. Um, and I think, you know, I think what you're really good about, Jairus, is, is um, and, and I feel like you, you put yourself down a couple times about it, but just knowing kind of who you are as a person, I don't think it's bad that if you're not a person that, sometimes you can't do certain things um, or doesn't want to focus on 15 to 30 minutes a day of a certain, you know, item if it's golf. Not everybody has to, you know what I mean? It's just, it is what it is, okay? So, um, you know, so that, I guess just learning about that and, you know, you being honest with me and saying, hey, this is just not it. So I felt like there are a few adjustments I had to make and, you know, kind of say, you know what, like this, this isn't changing. And when I bring that up, and I, I'll say this, you know, when you started off, you were way out here, okay? It's better now, okay? You, it's not all the way, but you know, what's amazing is I can hold your head right here and you do it perfect. All I can say to you is this, and I, I know I told you a million times, but since this is the wrap up, if you figure that out, Jairus, your game will become consistent, okay? Why? Because think about this movement you have. You hear, you have to figure out every time how much to slide to get back, okay? Now, here's what's so interesting is how you did get a lot better because I was even going through tonight, and look, or was it the other, last night, uh, looking at some of your stats and your low point, everything was behind when we started, a wildly over the top. We had 11s, 12s, negative 11, negative 12s. So towards the end, when you would go bad, it was like, say, negative three or four. You'd maybe get up to a negative five with a driver. Um, but what, what was so important about those is you knew it immediately, right? Immediately knew it. Um, so I would say this. Path, you know, is super important, okay? Um, because what, what will happen is, you know, and I, I could be wrong, but, you know, we typically go back to... Um, you know, what is the, what the dominant pattern is in us. And, you know, your dominant pattern is to have um, an over the top swing because you see it come out when you're doing that, trying to maybe swing harder or whatever, it'll come out. And that's usually a good, good example or a good time to figure out if you've kind of had something kicked, do a full swing and swing hard. And then if you, you know, videotape it or look at the numbers, if you're on a track night or something, and if you still do it, it's pretty good. There's, there's your, you still do the old way. There's your sign that uh, it, you're not ready, and it makes sense. I mean, I know we talked a lot about how we learn and everything like that, and so you're well aware of that. So I, you know, um, we did a lot of work on these, but I, you know, there's as far as the body movement with you, that that was really big. Um, one of your bigger biggest issues is is your body not working on the way back. Okay, so there's this movement. But when you're doing that, the, the club has to get moving somehow. So it's very, very much your arms, okay? So there'll be this move here, and then you end up getting tucked back here a lot. And then, you know, you'll do this. But here's the thing, you, you even got better at that. You'd sometimes get tucked back here, and you'd go here. And now you know to look out for this wrist, okay? So there's one big thing to point out. Ball going off to the right. And you were really good at calling those numbers um, as far as, oh, I, you know, you were wrong every time at the beginning about the over the tops or whatever, um, you know, trying to figure out a slice or whatever going way over the top, way over the top. And it's like, uh, well, not really. What's your face doing? Okay. So you got, I mean, you got as good as you can, I mean, for guessing and I say, no, educated guess every time you were really good at it. Um, so to me, those are huge. That's hugely valuable. It separates you 
from, I would say 99 out of 100 players, and that's even good players, supposedly good players. I, you know, I, I, I kind of a different standard of what good players are, you know. But anyways, um, you know, I, I know people who are scratch handicaps that, this is why I'll, I'll, I'll take a quick break to tell you this why I think that, because about good players not being that good, really. Because if you're a scratch handicap, that's eight of your best 12 rounds of golf. Oh, eight, eight of your best 20 rounds of golf. So there, there's a great possibility with a lot of people that they have a lot of those rounds that aren't that good and those aren't counted. So I think if you didn't have that number like that, then it'd be a lot different. So that's why, you know, I just don't, I don't look at, uh, look at it that way. Um, I find, you know, really good players as tour players because I, I played that and I, I know what they do. It's a different story. Um, but being on that level of what you know to do as far as you're going to go play people have no idea where the ball starts where it starts they have no idea why it hooks why it slices you know what's the deal you can't figure it out that day you have something going on with you so whether you're doing this or not it doesn't matter right it's your path and face um so this is uh you know i know you love this drill but this would fix you all the time Okay, and to, and to get back to my point on um, the body movement about you uh, doing it, you know, it'd be a lot of this and then pulling it back. It's even hard for me to do, but you'd get really, really across you. Um, and that's hard on your shoulder. It is. It's just not. It's. It's. It does not generate power at all. What generates power is our hands. I mean, in one essence, we got to get our hands far away from us. Okay, we don't ever on the back. We don't ever want to have our hands. You know, somewhere in here or here. Look how close I am. If I get it more like somewhere, I got mirrors here. I'm looking at two here. I mean, that's as far as I can go with my hands. So that's separation. But if I'm here, it's a really weak move. And some of it happens because you don't rotate well enough. Okay. So rotation. If you don't rotate, let's say your body's kind of stopping, which you do at times. Your arms going to keep going because you want to generate power. So you're going to be somewhere back there. That's a tough one. Okay. Um, I just want you to feel like, what would it be like if you took your body, let's say we're going to make more of a square, this is a little bit different, okay, but you feel like the arms got to stay right, right here. And if we turn, what is that like? How do, so you're going to have to feel the body moving. You know, another way is just kind of go like this. You're, I mean, I... I feel my obliques, my right oblique big time doing it. So that's going to allow you to take this clip back and not get sucked behind you. Okay. That's, that's the main reason it gets way behind you is because you don't have enough body turn. Okay. So that's why this drill was so big, but you struggled with it going like this because you would still go like that and your hands would maneuver it back like this instead of letting your body take it and you'll end up like that. Okay. So you got to think when I'm here, the body takes it back. The arms are, hands are along for the ride. I mean, another way to think about it is if you just take this club and you go put it almost like this, I'm going to show you right here. And then when you start turning, that's how it gets kind of thrown up. It's almost the same drill as this, but so I'm going to do my turn. I'm going to start turning and then it catches up up here. So you see here, now I'm in a good spot. Every time I will be. So here, I don't whip it with my body moving. I turn my body, and then eventually this thing just whips up to the correct spot. You know, I, I think another good way just to feel, you know, what we're trying to do, if you can. Um, but, I mean, for me, for you, <laughs> this drill right here um, was one that um, would get your path fixed every time. And what did you have to think about? It was always getting the feeling for you that um, it was more of a... Tightness. More of um, you know, kind of like a figure eight, right? So more outside, because you like any. Remember, this is another body thing again. If I do not, you know, of course I can push out here like this, but in general, this club's gonna get sucked behind if I don't have enough body turn. Okay, it's just what's gonna happen. So for you, here, we're just gonna feel. You can even do this with this, buddy. We stop there if we want to, check our wrist, come down here, boom. Pretty good, right? 
I mean, that's what you want to do. Um, that's your drill for getting out. So really, buddy, there's two things for you that are huge, okay? Your body, if you're going to work on it. Now, let, let's say you don't fix this. The, the thing you do with your leg, um, knee. Then I would still argue with you and want you to still always work on feeling as much as you can this upper body to feel like you can't start your downswing you know, until you get your left chin or your chin under your, uh, your left shoulder under your chin. Gosh, I felt like that sounded really weird coming out. <laughs> left chin under your shoulder is what I felt like I was saying. Um, you know, that and your other problem is you go over the top. And I guess the same thing with that is when you go over the top a lot, you know, your club ends up facing this way, remember? And look what that does to the wrist. This is a classic sign too of the body not turning at all, okay? So what I would do is I'd take it and say, hey, come here, and you'd push out a little more to me. I'd say, meet me here, and then you'd do this, and look where you'd get. You'd get to a good spot, right? So I really feel like that's the main points for you to work on. Um, that's where you're going to go wrong with that big slice. Um, now, if you can keep it under control, you know, that's great. You know, you know how to do it. Um, but it's always going to want to get a little worse on you. Just, just realize that, okay? It, it, it's um, it's always going to want to creep in at your worst, worst times that you don't want it. Um, I mean, I'm not going to say always, but it will at times because it is your dominant power. So I would I would still work my friend on getting, you know, did a lot of drills like this, but favorite one that you got that feeling was, this is going to be a weird angle with that camera, but that's one thing that I can't do it right here, real, but here, so I'm here. Where we start like this, I get, the reason I always did this for you was to try to get you to turn. So if the left shoulder goes down, we turn. Okay, now, look where I'm at. Now, that's what I want you to feel. Um, you know, if somebody came and said, hey Eric, how does this work? Um, or if you're a hooker like me, <laughs> I would not tell you to do it that way, okay? Because I would tell you the arm works a little bit different. But you need to feel that move to help you out, okay? Because your bad move is what? Hands going out. So you need to feel the opposite to help you out, okay? Um, the other one is that, you know, basically the, if we go 90, uh, 45, and then I don't know, about 22 and a half. And if, if you feel like that's too much, drop it down, you know, because if you feel like you are getting too inside out, drop it down. Um, and then we're just going to do either a drill or something to check up on how we're doing, you know, with the, with the uh, 22 and a half. And basically, are we dropping down where we want to be? So here we go. We go here. I'm going to feel my obliques take this club back. Like the club just, you notice how it doesn't even move at first? It doesn't start the move. Watch this if you watch it real slow. Well, it my body, doesn't it? And it's not my hips, I don't start the move. I start this thorax, like obliques pulling, then that pulls that, that pulls that, and I get this huge stretch. And that gets me on the way down to just um, unwind. So for you, you're gonna come down and remember P6. And you know what to do. Match it, the 22 and a half degree drill. Look where the face is, nice. So you can just whoop, wallop it. So I really, I. That's it. And here's the thing, Jairus, like, I'm pretty sure I, we talked a little bit about this, though, about golf and your golf swing and what's going to happen in the future, that those motor patterns you have, the old ones, are going, they're still stronger than your new ones, okay? So you still have to do some work to get them in. Um, the other thing is this. Um, if you start playing real well, okay, you're going to run, okay? You're playing three, four days real well, okay? And then it goes bad. Don't ask what happened, okay? Because you know what happened. Start with what's going on with the ball, okay? Are you getting wild movements? Remember, why would wild movements ever happen? Because there's such a discrepancy between the face and the path, right? It means we have a negative five path with a three face. That ball's going crazy to the right. So that's the first thing we kind of check out. Okay, path, what the heck's going on? I got this terrible path. So, Shinori, I have no fucking idea what I'm doing. Yes, you do. Okay, so realize that, number one, you know what's going on. And then number two, you know, use the stuff we've learned to fix what you have going on. Because I promise you this, 
you're not going to wake up tomorrow morning after playing great for five days and have it go bad because you woke up with my golf swing, let's say, and you don't know how to use it. It's always going to be your golf swing, okay? Like, I think you're on like untrained eye compared to mine. If I showed you video of you, the latest video, well, you actually did some big change, but most people wouldn't even be able to tell changes made. They're, they look so minute. I mean, to me, and I think even to you, like the things we worked on, they probably look pretty big because we did a lot of work for over quite a bit of time on it to notice those things. So, um, but anyways, the main point is this, is your issue is the same thing arms aren't our bodies not turning out the club may get like this right and then we may come like that not even forward on our body so we're staying back a little bit maybe hit it fat okay so you on that next day that you didn't play well with all those other days you have close to that same swing you're just not timing things out as well that's why i stress so hard the body moving better and you're getting more forward and impact with a closed face so we can always make clean contact no matter what. And you got a lot better at it, okay? So know that it's your golf swing on those bad days, really close to that one when you played really well. It's very close to it. Don't think you gotta start over, break anything down. You know what's wrong with it. Fix it by one of those, a drill we did. You know, you're, it's gonna be one of those things I told you or a combination of all of them. That's, that, I think that's the, the thing with golf that people really miss when things go wrong, that they'll, they think, they start searching for things and it's like, if you just go back and think about how you fixed yourself in the past, you'd fix yourself. Okay. I'm, 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 I, I, I'm not kidding. It's, it's really, um, simple in that, in that way. So, um, yeah, I think that wraps it up. So anyways, thank you again, Jairus. Um, I always do something uh, like special for race for coming back to see me. If you need some help in the future, um, I'd still love to see you. I mean, even if, uh, you don't want to lessen keep keep in touch my friend um hope things keep going well for you hope things go well for you and uh like i said in that in that email i just i wish the best for you in life and uh hope everything turns out well for you i know it will keep up the good work okay my friend take care and thanks again and uh glad to know you take care bye